Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today I am going to cover a portion that we had not covered before the mid-sem because uh, it was getting too theoretical and uh, I thought let us give a break. But uh, this is again part of the previous capsule. So let us revisit pressure height and uh, first of all let us see if we can define pressure height and from now on we will call it as HPH. So, this is uh, the definition of pressure height about which you are all familiar. It is a height as the airship keeps climbing. We release the air from the balloon and you reach a height at which the balloon become flush and there is no air left in the balloon. So that is the pressure height and the analogous uh, definition will be the ceiling for an aircraft. So, let us remember or recall the inflation fraction relationship applicable. Uh, so, if we ignore super pressure, we have seen earlier that the inflation fraction at any operating condition 2 is equal to the ratio of the pressures at any condition 1, PS1 upon PS2 into the ratio of the temperature at altitude 2 upon altitude 1 times the inflation fraction at the condition 1. And in the temperature, I have also included superheat terms. So, I have ignored super pressure, but I have retained the superheat terms. Okay, so, this is something that we had already derived earlier. I am just reproducing here for continuity. So, if you consider ISA conditions, so, what will happen in a IIC condition is that the ambient temperature Ta will become the standard temperature under ISA at that altitude called as Ts and the delta Tsh or the superheat contribution will be 0. So, we get a very simple expression I2 is equal to Ps1 by Ps2 into Ts2 by Ts1 times I1. So, this simple relationship directly connects inflation fraction at any altitude with inflation fracture at some other altitude with the pressures and the temperatures. Once again, we are ignoring superheat, we are ignoring uh, super pressure, we are considering ISC conditions and we are also ignoring in this case any lifting gas purity or the effect of humidity, etc. This is a very simplistic explanation. Okay. Now, under ISC conditions, the ratio of pressures PS1 to PS2 is called as delta and the ratio of temperatures is called as theta. So, you can replace PS1 by PS2 as delta 1 by delta 2 because delta 1 is PS1 by P0 and delta 2 is PS2 by P0, P0 being the sea level standard pressure. And uh, similarly, Ts2 by T0 is theta S2 and Ts1 by T0 is theta S1. So, you can replace this by the standard relationships. And once again, we also know that the value of delta by theta, uh, theta by delta is sigma or the density ratio. So, therefore, inflation fraction at any operating condition under standard ISA will be equal to the density altitude sigma s2 upon sigma s1 times i1. So, this simple relationship connects any two operating altitudes with their densities. Okay. Now, let us look at what happens when the airship for some reason has to fly above the pressure altitude and also let us look at the relationships. So, I am replacing the same expression from the previous slide here. I am calling it as Ig with it stands for the inflation 
fraction at ground level equivalent to the subscript 1 in the previous slide. And I am putting pH as the subscript for 2 considering pH to be the pressure altitude or the pressure height. So once again we get Ig inflation fraction at ground level is equal to PSPH by PSG times temperature ratio times IPH. Is this clear? So we have just taken the simple relationship between any two points and we have considered those two points to be the ground and the pressure altitude. And we are assuming uh, that one to one relationship exists. Please note here I have not assumed anything like ISA. Although I have ignored super pressure, I am retaining superheat. Okay. Now what is the value of IPH, inflation fraction at pressure altitude? 100% or 1 ratio is 1. Correct. So therefore, you can replace it by 1 and hence you can say that inflation at ground would be equal to just the ratio of pressures and the ratio of temperatures including the superheat if present because the inflation fraction at the pressure altitude is 1. There is no air left, the balloon is flush. Okay, the same formula we copy ahead. Now let us look at uh, let us look at these expressions once again. So if we assume ISA conditions and zero superheat, then the T A will become T S and the delta T S H P H will vanish. Okay. So therefore, the equation will become P S P H by P S G into T A G plus delta T S H G upon T S P H instead of A it becomes S. And what you can also do is you can basically uh, leave the pressure ratios on one side and take the other terms on that side. So PSPH by PSG as shown here will become IG into TSPH, okay? uh, IG into PSG divided by TAG plus delta TSGH. So I am just inverting the sides. And if we now continue to look at the ISA conditions or if we look at standard conditions, we have delta and theta as the ratios. So when you put those values, you can get an expression like this. The, what is the advantage of doing this? The advantage of doing this is that you bring in T0 and P0 which are constants. T0 being 288.16 degrees Kelvin and P0 being 101.325 Newton per meter square. So these two numbers are constants. So therefore, the density ratio at the pressure altitude, okay, that is sigma SPH will be equal to two standard quantities, their ratio times pressure at the ground under standard conditions, temperature at the ground and if any superheat is present times Ig. So it simplifies. Now the same expression I will just copy and paste here. So it is the same thing which I am transferring to the next slide. Now let us look at these numbers. So I would like you to substitute for T0 and P0. T0 101.325, sorry, P0 101.325 and T0 288.16. Okay. I expect people to bring calculators in the class. So can you please do this, find this ratio? So all you can do in this is replace for T0 and P0. And what would the value be for TAG? if you assume G as the ground level or as the sea level, ambient temperature at ground or at uh, operating at, at ground zero uh, altitude, 288.16 same as T0 at, for uh, sea level. So what do you get? I want an expression which says sigma SPH which is the density ratio for a given pressure altitude in terms of the Indian pressure on the ground, temperature on the ground, ground level inflation fraction and delta T SHG. 
how much will it be? Yeah, 2.84 times by minus 3, 0 0.0, 0 0.284, correct. So, if you now replace TAG in centigrades, then it will be 273 degrees plus TAG. So, by this simple expression, you can get the value of the sigma. So, how does it help you? How does this expression help you? Why are we doing this? Everything is in ground level. So, therefore, what does it get you? What does it help you obtain? Let us say you are operating your airship from some place. So, you know the pressure at that place, PSG. You also know the TAG, temperature at that place. And you also know the superheat, temperature increase because of superheat. So, I assume that I have a temperature sensor inside the envelope. I keep this airship on the ground for a long time and I find that because of the heating of the sun, there is some temperature increase of the gas. So, when I know all these things, what do I get? Sigma SPH. That you will make, you will get sigma SPH if you know the value of Ig. Now, think reverse. If you want to have a particular pressure altitude, that means, let us say you want to fly at least up to 5000 feet. Then sigma SPH you can get from the tables. So, with that you can get now the value of Ig. That is, what should be the inflation fraction on the ground. So, that this airship from these operating conditions can go to a particular pressure altitude. So, let us say you are planning a profile or a journey for an airship from Pune to Mumbai or Mumbai to Pune. So, you need to know what will be the uh, altitude which I should cover. So, you can back calculate. So, you, you can come to know how much should be the volume of air in the balloon as a percentage of the total gas for me to create the possibility of flying up to a pressure height. Because in normal circumstances, we do not wish to exceed the pressure height. Today, we will see what happens when you exceed the pressure height also, but you would not plan for it. Okay. So, now we know that I2 is equal to sigma 1 by sigma 2 times I1 for any operating condition if we ignore the super, uh, heat and super pressure. So, therefore, the inflation fraction under ISA conditions will be equal to the ratio of density altitude at pressure height upon the sigma at the ground into IPH. Right. But IPH will be 1. So, therefore, you can easily get the value of sigma SPH. So, the place where you are operating, you also know the density of the air at that particular condition, P by RT. So, therefore, you know the density ratio, sigma. So, this will tell you, this will easily tell you, either it is, so if you, if you fix the inflation fraction at sea level, at, at ground level, you will know how much high you can go by getting the sigma value. Please understand that sigma SPH is a number which from the atmospheric tables can give you the H. Or we can do the reverse. If I want to go to that height, I should have the inflation fraction up to a particular minimum value. 